your source for independent music from around the world. So take a seat, take a listen. Here we go, The Balcony Show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Balcony Show. I'm your host, Dan Thatcher, in studio with my co-host, Mad Cat. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, Ann. Hello. How was your week, sir? My week was good. It was long. It was it was a week. Okay. <laughs> but you, I got to say, you made my week. I made your week. Yeah. And how did I make your week? Well. And might I say you're welcome. <laughs> I think everybody ought to be treated to the video of you singing. Oh, that is some <laughs> BS. I got roped, okay? Like. Yeah, they tied him to the. To the microphone, just saying. I have a hard time saying no. Obviously. So, what do you what do you get to see? Well, or hear and see, really. Yeah. Achy breaky heart by Mad Cat. Yep. Yes, he did. True story. Best thing ever. Oh yeah, don't tell my heart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm gonna do yeah. it. And I, I, of course, I had to let everybody know. I used to teach country line dancing to it as well. Yeah, but they were they were like people were dancing to it. They they were jamming to your yeah, uh, no doubt. And I and I will absolutely say that it, as small as that little karaoke stage is, it still feels good when people do get up and respond to whatever it is you're doing, even if it is the gut responding awful. too. But it was more like yeah. laughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not gonna lie. See now, me on the inside, I was crying. I was waiting. <laughs> I was waiting for. Um, yeah. I always try to please my fans that are there. So usually it's it's always been my rule, and sometimes that rule bites me in the ass. They ask me to sing a song, I'll do it. You know, and it's you know, it's what they want. You know, I mean I, it was it was something I did back when I was a DJ and I ran a karaoke show. The last hour of the night used to be blood murder for me because these guys would take me through the gambit from Neil Neil Diamond to Neil Young to Disturb to Billy Idol to Poison and then you know and then by the, by the end of that I don't know how those No wonder you don't know which way you're going yeah, when you're oh going man, there. forget about it. I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how bands like Disturb do a 3 hour show cuz I do that stuff for an hour and I'm like hacking blood for the next 3 weeks. Hmm. And I was just never good. So are you ready for this week's hashtag? Sure. I love hashtags. Yeah, hashtag cat knocker. Hashtag guy. <laughs> I don't even, you know, oh, shit, I can't go nowhere, so I guess I can. You want to take a guess? No, I, I don't even want to try. <laughs> <laughs> See, your guys, your mind's in the gutter, thinking about all that pussies and stuff. What do you mean? <laughs> what? Cats. Cats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, speaking of cats, there we have somebody dumped cats in our neighborhood, which is really a bad thing. These cats have become so aggressive, I kid you not. I heard a knocking on my door, on my front door. So I go to answer it, and the freaking cat was knocking on the door, one of the feral cats. And I'm like, really? Really? A cat. So, yeah, he was a cat knocker, man. Nice. <laughs> Lemieux. Really? Lemieux. And then he looks up at me. <laughs> meow, meow. Get your ass out here and feed me. Meow. See, I talk cat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm the mad cat, and I don't even know what the hell's going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, things could be worse. But we have a country show, so yeah. see your achy, breaky segment. What a great thing. You're, you started off the show, and you I, we will post this on the Balcony Show, just so that you can all delight. <laughs> yeah. Because it really is fun to watch. So... Today's guest is going to be Kendall Conrad. I'm super excited for her to be on the show. Yes, absolutely. What, a, absolutely. what an absolutely fabulous singer and a really nice person. And of course, we have our spotlight and pro tips coming up with Bo Summer later in the show. So you're going to want to stay tuned. But let's get our music going. And we're going to start out with this guitar by Brandon Maddox. And we'll be right back with the rest of the show. This guitar was built in 67 She's proof that older women are wiser than I am Mabel Top, some buzz at Fred 11 You 
yet she still feels like lightning shooting through my hands. On a wall, some shop in San Francisco, one strum and sheet seduced me, started this love affair. Sunburst Telecaster Went broke to buy this beauty Feel like a millionaire And she's been with me Through the hungry years She guards my secrets Nobody hears Nothing on earth Could tear us apart Me and this guitar Started fighting, one through a long neck bottle. That's how she got this neck, this guitar. And me just kept on riding, steel strings against her saddle. We never missed a lick, and she's been with me through the hungry years. She guards my secrets, nobody hears. Nothing on earth could tear us apart. Shiny and do But I don't follow the trend And ditching my best friend Is something I never do Yeah, to This guitar show up next we have lauren christine with her song radio silence and when we come back kendall conrad will be here in the studio with us take a listen Talking all night long in the bed of your truck Thought maybe this time I could be in luck Started to feel like you could be the one Then you decided to run You're no good, no good for me Why can't I just let you go and let it be Waiting on a call that'll never come I don't know why you got me all tore up You told me that you can't Like a Texas afternoon As unpredictable and tough to know As a stallion at his first rodeo Just when I started to feel Like you could be the one Yeah, you decided to run Cause you're no good No good for me Why can't I just let you go and let it be Waiting on a call that'll never come I don't know why you got me all tore up You told me that you can't
Welcome to The Balcony Show. We're back with Kendall Conrad in the studio. (laughs) Hi, Kendall. Welcome to The Balcony Show. Hi. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to have you. Aw. Wow, girl. You are tearing it up. (laughs) Thank you. you. Literally, you're tearing it up. I I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I try to keep busy, so. Keith Urban? Yep. Okay, for those of you who don't know, uh, Kendall was invited on stage to perform with Keith Urban, and then he was one of your picks. Yeah, that was that was almost even crazier. I go on the website, and it's like, the tour has ended, and it says, like, Keith's favorite moments from the tour, and it's a picture of me and him. That's awesome. Unbelievable. That yeah. Awesome. So what was that like? What, singing with him? Um... It, honestly, it was the quickest, however long that song was, two minutes and 40 seconds of my life. Like, it just, I was, camp- I watched him play guitar, like, th- th- an inch away from me. <laughs> it was ridiculous. You seemed quite um, comfortable. I was comfortable singing, yeah. I was more nervous. I got to meet him before and talk to him a little bit. I was more nervous to talk to him than I was to sing with him. So, that part I was cool with because i know how to do that but it was just like what do i say to this person who like has influenced me and like i admire and i want to be like and like plays guitar amazing it's like what do i say to him in this like whatever five minutes that i have like what do you say to that person and i was just so nervous so he he plays a uh a martin guitar i play a martin guitar so i brought that up um but yeah it was just he was really cool well you know there in the end we're all people so Mm -hmm. but You've also opened for quite a quite a few different acts. Yeah, uh, one of them I noticed was Charlie Daniels Brown uh-huh, Band yeah. because I that's something from my era mm-hmm. and um, amazing players. Oh my god, yeah! Out of all of the bands, can you pick like a couple favorites that you know were memorous for you? Um, number one actually isn't the Keith show. Number one for me was Blake Shelton. And that was at the Dick's Sporting Goods Open two years ago. Um, and there's 18,000 people there. Same deal. Got Blake talked to me. Got to meet him. And then I got to play for that crowd of his fans of 18,000 people. And no that, pressure. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. That was so cool. That was my favorite show. And then before Old Dominion exploded, they played um, a little club on the beach in Point Pleasant, New Jersey called Jenks Club. And I love them. And my mother loved them. We all loved them. And it was right before they blew up. And uh, I got to open for them at this little club and, and meet them and see them. The way they work the crowd, like, it's amazing. And, like, they're super cool guys. They were all nice to me. Um, that was pretty cool, But too. don't you find that – I know that I find that the more – famous most of the people are and there are always some Mm -hmm. it seems to me the more kinder they are the more you know like there's a lot of really decent people out there who've made it but they're not like all inflated right there's still down some that are not but Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. so fast forward and now we have leader of the pack (laughs) which is your brand new single yeah and i gotta say it's really good thank you so thank you so much. Tell us about Leader of the Pack. So it's weird because I I tell people I am a country artist. Like I don't want to be a pop artist, which is funny. But then like I pitch that song to publishers, labels. I play it for people. And half the people are like, this is a pop song. 
Um, so it's kind of funny because I would I don't think I would want to be a pop artist. Um, so leader of the pack is kind of has always been my brainchild of what I want my sound to be. So I think there's this wailing fiddle line in that song. There's banjo. It's twangy. And then it's got like 808s and like pop beats on the bottom. And I wanted it all in, you know, the same creative space. And I was like, is that going to sound weird? Is it going to be hokey? Like, would it work? I want it to be a serious song. Um, And so I just did it. I just went into the studio uh, with Matt McVaney, who produced it, and he listened to me and everything that I said, and we just did it, and that was the result. And I like loved it. I was like, this it feels like me, because um, it kind of it's like directly in the middle of both. Like it really is pop country. Um, so yeah, I was I'm just really happy with. So did that. you write that song? I did. Yeah. And how does writing happen for you? Uh, so I wrote that um, with my mom, and his name's Anthony Gallagher. And he, I met him at a Live Nation event. He was uh, doing the sound. And he was like, hey, I do beats and, and demos and stuff if you want to write. And so the three of us were like writing in his basement in Limerick. And oh, he was, cool. yeah. And so we, yeah, we didn't write it with Matt, the producer. And so he was playing me like this loop thing. And he was like, I'm working with this sound. And he was playing it. And I was kind of like, this feels like this line that I've been sitting on. If you throw me to the wolves, I'm going to come back the leader of the pack. And I was like, that kind of feels eerie like that, like a 21 pilots kind of weird thing. And so we just started writing it. We wrote it in like three hours. It was pretty cool. Well, you have a while yet to kind of find your your thing, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So yeah. I think it's really great to explore. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mm-hmm. agree. I mean, every, everything evolves, and you've definitely set up a nice platform to kind of launch yourself from. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's weird. It's crazy. All right. Well, we're going to take a break and let our listeners hear Leader of the Pack, and we'll be right back with the rest of the interview with Kendall Conrad. You could keep me from the stars They're closing in now I can hear them growl You left me for dead With nothing else to be said Didn't give me a second thought Set your traps then I was caught But I found my way to the top No, I ain't gonna stop I'm still a she up and spit you out No one around to save you now Thank you. 
we're back at the balcony show with Kendall Conrad. And there you have it. We're back. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, hi again. <laughs> we were gone for such a long time. Oh my God, felt like forever. That's true. So when did music find you? Or how did you find music? Um, I don't even know. Like, I was just always very shy and introverted. And I talking to people makes me very nervous um, since I was, like, real little. Yeah, I know that's weird. So I just feel like I, I sing because I can, like, talk to people through music without talking to people. As weird as that sounds. So it's like, no. it's like m- music is my speaking voice. Right. It's very weird. And, like, I can talk if, if it's, like, facilitated or around, like, music. But it's just, I don't know. It's so very hard for me to, like, just go up and talk to people. Like, socially. Like, you know, not at a function, a music event, anything that has to do with that. It's very strange. I so, was going to say, you're doing a pretty good job right now. I'm not, I'm yeah. <laughs> well, see, it's also, it's also helped that get better, too. Right. Like, it's forced me to talk to people then. So it's kind of, it's funny. So I feel like it just started out of, like, necessity. I'm not. Sh- I don't know. I was just always. Well, they very keep throwing shy. mics in front of your face and saying, "Give me your opinion." That's going to happen, right? And so it's it's helped. It's actually helped because I know some people like some girls do like pageants and th- and which I have done. It's like that helps with the with the speaking and yes, and talking Miss to Talent. People. Yes, yes, I was Miss Talent. <laughs> I, out of all the states, congratulations! That was pretty cool. Thank you so much. That was with a song I wrote too. Yeah, Girl Strong. Everyone Which, told me not to do it. They were like, how are the judge is going to judge that? I'm like, I don't know. Follow your heart. You I know was what like, I mean? go and twirl your, your baton. Okay, right, leave right, me alone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ray I won. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, there's, there's some really nice girls in those systems that I'm, I still talk to. But there's also to. a lot of catty girls, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. It is what it is. It's a competition. Right. It's the you know breeding I mean? ground for catty. Yeah. So What's, what's that saying in South... Uh, Oh, bless your heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's Chucky. <laughs> Southern charm. Yes. Solid cast off. <laughs> that's so So funny. tell us something about Kendall. Yeah. That a lot of your listeners probably wouldn't know. Probably wouldn't know. Hmm. Well, I don't I don't know if I talk about it a whole lot. I'm super into anything horror. I love that. I think I have that posted in my bio on my website. Um, so when I was in college, I was a theater major and I wanted to graduate with honors in theater. So you have to write like a hundred page paper. Mine was on Sweeney Todd. Nice. The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Oh, come on. Johnny Depp <laughs> nailed that. He did. He nailed he it. He did. Yep. I like both. I, I like that movie was the bomb. I loved it too. I thought it, he's, who's great in it. Helena Bonham Carter was great in it. Like. So I did this whole paper on um, how violence in theater like slowly progresses with like oh, what you really show true. on stage. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And I looked at it in the, the focus, you know, of that show and how you weren't allowed to stage anything when it came out in the 1800s. Like you weren't allowed to stage violence at all. And then we flash forward to the movie where it's like, how can we make the blood look more real? Right, right. And back in the day, it was like illegal to even, you know, you had to have a messenger run on stage and be like, so and so was attacked like what you know you couldn't show it so well my daughter is also a theater major so oh okay yeah. mark here is an actor i did theater. I, yeah i did theater for a uh, few years even no even way. allowed somebody speaking about on stage violent i even allowed somebody to hit me in the head with a shovel like really or did you have yeah, like a no, clap no, no. thing no no no, no i told them to really that, do it because that answers a lot what show <laughs> right. what show was it i we were we were doing uh uh it was a uh, hybrid of Abbott and Costello meet the monster. Okay. To which okay. I played the monster. And this guy was doing such a bad job at pantomiming yes. the hit. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I, you know, now I, I can take a pretty good shot, you know. So I told him, like, hit me here mm-hmm. in the center of my forehand point on the, you know, the <laughs> can everybody see that? <laughs> Uh, right in the center of my forehead, you know, <laughs> where the bone is the thickest, you know, yeah. and he's scared to death. So I pulled him off stage, called him a whole bunch of names. I rattled his cage really nice, got him really mad. Mm-hmm. And then we went back out and there were people all the way in the back of the room that could hear the ping of that shovel oh, man. off my head. Suffering for his art. See? Oh, every, every, every time. Yeah. Every See? time. I did a, in a local independent horror movie 
Uh, super low budget, but it was mm. a lot of fun. My character was Herb, Herb West, zombie guy. That's so cool. I and had to you have a, played. Yeah. You oh, played. yeah. I had a big, the Civic Theater of Allentown got the script um, right off of Broadway. They were the first ones to get it. Breakfast at Tiffany's, the play. Yeah, and I was Holly Golightly, so I was the first one to play it after it was on Broadway. That was so crazy. Like, that was I – saw, I saw they were having auditions for it, and I love that movie. And so I, I, I auditioned for it because I love that character. And as it turns out, the play is based off of the novel and not the movie, and both are, like, extremely different. So the play was actually not as romantic – Ah, like yeah, as the actual movie, it was very interesting to like see how Hollywood took it and commercialized it. Wow. So yeah, like she's blonde in the book, so I had to I auditioned thinking that I was like great for the part because I'm a brunette. <laughs> like I look like her. This is great. And they were like, "You're gonna have to wear a wig." And I was like, "What? Why?" And they're like, "She's blonde. She's like platinum blonde." And apparently, he wrote it for Marilyn Monroe to play the part, not Audrey Hepburn, and that's why she's blonde in the book. And I was like, "Whoa." You learn the new stuff every day. See? You know, Amazing. Like, right, right, right. So as it turns out, I was not physically right for the part, but I wore a wig. <laughs> That's all right. It's wow. pretty fun. It was wow. cool. That was a great experience. So tell us where people can find you on social media. Okay. So it's just my name, K-E-N-D-A-L-1-L, um, Conrad with a C. And that's like, if you like put it into Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it should pop up i'm hoping like easily findable it is okay it is if you even if you just google kendall conrad your name my comes links up. It's should one come up yeah ones. and like i'm on i'll you know message me on any of it i check my email all the time so where do you see yourself in five years what's your goals i mean I w- i've always wanted to be on tour i know a lot of people their thing is they want to hear themselves on the radio you know they want to hear their song on cat country 96 like the big station and I just always wanted to be on tour. Like, I want to be Keith Urban's opening act every night. Nice. Like, with a set, you know. Like, right, I get right. 30 minutes before Keith comes out at these arenas, you know, across the country. Do you hear that, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like, that's what I want to do. I don't even need to be headlining at this. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. I want to put on, like, a Taylor Swift stadium show where it's, like, moving set pieces and you create, like, that theater thing. Yep. You create, like, a story and your tour every night you get to, like, tell that story on stage, which is such a country thing to, like, be a storyteller. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. You know, Freddie Mercury from Queen, he mm-hmm. was quite a storyteller. There's been mm-hmm. some. Mm-hmm. Well, right, mm-hmm. you're right. There's there's plenty of, uh, on the other end of the genre that that do tackle, but it's... Michael Jackson was right. another one. Right, Janet right, right. Jackson. Yep. That's I true. Mean, mm-hmm. I mean, think, I think that's bringing more to the table, so I think that's mm-hmm. a really great idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's so hard, though, like, with what's on the radio now, pop-wise, it's just so very... <laughs> I mean, it always, you know, not that it suddenly became derivative. Like, that's not the case either. Right. Um, but it's like my mom was saying, where's all the, like, love songs? It's a true story. Like, Look. my sister is getting married, and she doesn't want to pick Celine Dion from the 90s. You know, she wants to We're pick a current. We're going to because there were some artists on that I had on. Really? And they write songs for people's weddings. Oh, really? They interview them, and they write a song, especially. But you could write them a song. That's true. That's very true. Write your right. sister yeah. a song. But she wants something that was a hit. You know, that will define, like, years from now, that will be their wedding song, and they, they'll think back, oh, that was the, our era. That was our time period. Right, right. They don't want to pick, you know, they want something that was relevant. And they, the, like, I think they came up with maybe John Legend, All of Me. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. But, like, they're like, what's on the, what's out? Yeah, it's there, so there, fr- yeah. There, there it's, isn't anything. It's so anymore. strange. It used to be almost mandatory that every artist, when they put an album out, they had, it had to a make, big ballad love song they on had there. To have it. Yeah, even the yeah. bands. But yep. I think that you know what? I think people are starting to crave that again. Yeah, they want more yeah. out of their music, and I think you are in a really good spot because your music talks about something. Mm-hmm. And so, what are you doing next? I see there's a little hat. Is that kind of a hint? Or? There, there, there might be a hint. We're gonna post up a picture later on uh, on the socials, and I'll I'll tag you on. So it. we a have a new a song hint. in the works. Yeah, I might be dropping a new song in the the next couple months. So, so uh, stay get, tuned. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So we'll this give one's you a, a crazy hint. One. You got to take a 
we'll, we'll put the picture on the website yeah, and on her website. Yeah, you got to now you got to check out. Now you got to check it out to find <laughs> out. See. All right. Well, we're going to end with come to your senses. Uh, you want to set that up for our viewers, um, our listeners? So Not I, you. <laughs> <laughs> so so that one that was my mom's whole idea. Come to your senses. She had been wanting to write with me, and I was like, "Mom, like no." <laughs> and, and she's like, she, "I walked, I walked in the door one night after a gig, and she's like, come to your senses.'" And I was like, "As a title, it's kind of cool." And then she was like, "Well, what if it's literally come to your senses, not like you're crazy? What if it's like you're talking to a guy, and it's like, hear me do this and see me do this, and then you'd come to your senses." And see that, you know, we could fall in love or be a thing. And I was like, that's really cool. It's like turning it. It's turning the metaphor. And so it's just my frustrations with current dating stuff. And so the song was born. <laughs> Look, at they can't see you shaking your head <laughs> no, there, Mad really Cat. Can't. Uh, I think for Valentine's Day, we ought to do a thing, get a date with Mad Cat. Yeah? Well, no, I would have got my thing. I, po- I posted my meme yesterday what my Valentine's date is going to be. Really? Giant bowl of spaghetti and Empire Strikes Back, and I'm good. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah. If, if yeah. No, he's, he's a <laughs> lunatic magnet, Kendall. Yeah. 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 Pretty I don't know crazy. what kind of magnet I I just I just know that it's not it's not for me whatever it is it's whatever has time. happened up to this point. Well, I tell you what I mean <laughs> yeah. you definitely you definitely have a plan in mind as I as I read in your uh, your bio yeah you know wants to meet the love the love while sitting in a coffee shop wearing black lace yes I have it all like figured out my mind my favorite part though was uh reading something intellectual War and Peace yes oh, I've read War and Peace <laughs> I think if I walked in. To a coffee shop, and I saw a girl sitting there, black black lace notwithstanding, reading War and Peace. I'm walking the other direction. Oh man! See, <laughs> then you're you're not my guy. I, I could, I could <laughs> right? I mean, I could appreciate. Well, you the, just blew that, right? The intellectual level of it, I could appreciate. I can cross him listen, off the list. Right? Listen, <laughs> Mister Love Swami over here. It's a gift, I tell you. <laughs> and you're wondering why you're eating spaghetti? <laughs> yeah. See. This is my gift. I'm a, it is your gift. I'm a professional walk away. Oh my God. <laughs> With finesse. Yes. Well, if it makes you feel any better, that still hasn't happened to me yet. And I don't think for that to ha- actually have to happen, I would have to do that. I'm not sure if I've ever done Could that. Could be in my a life. video. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. Let me tell you, I got an idea. You have a video, but of course. You have to ha- cast mm. the video. Mm. So you have to cast your love interest. That's true. <laughs> Why not just parade a bunch of men until you find the one you like? That's true. Casting. Yeah. It's like, mm, you look good. Yep. Yeah. See? Yep. I, yeah. I got it, it could all be figured for come out. to your senses. You See, could be the lead in that. See, that's what we do here on the Balcony Show, Kendall. We yeah. help artists out every day. That's the whole video. I'm sitting there reading <laughs> Warm Peace. <laughs> and he comes to his senses. And he's like, whoa. <laughs> nice. And with that, I'm going to... Thank you so much oh, for coming God. on and spending some time with us. You guys are great. Yeah, yeah thank you. It was um, fun. Check out Kendall's music. Please, please, please purchase her songs because mm-hmm. that's what we're about. And follow, like like that social media. I'll and follow back on Twitter and Instagram. If I any, don't, you can message me. Any final yes. shout outs to anybody? Um, I don't think so. I love how in the email you sent me, you're like, you can bring a beverage and a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and I brought a beverage. <laughs> uh, well, you made new friends, so there I you did. go. That's what's up. I did. All right, we're going to end things tonight with Kendall Conrad's final song, Come to Your Senses. Take a listen, and we'll be right back with the rest of the show. Wake up, wake up. Been waiting all night for you to let up, let up Quit playing games, it's your move Put down your bottle, go full throttle Walk up to me, boy Get out of your head, get in mine instead This might sound crazy, boy
you can't fool, can't fool me and stuff faking that you don't wanna get out of here in an hour. Drive off and ditch this crowd. Get out of your head, get in mind instead. Tell me how does that sound? Balcony Show, proudly produced by SoundMind Studios for all your musical production needs. Check them out at SoundMindRecordingStudios.com. Up next, we have our spotlight portion with our lovely hostess, Emily Noel. Over to you, Em. Hey, everyone. It's Emily Noel, and joining me for tonight's spotlight is Gina Serrano. Hi, Gina. Hi, how are you? I'm doing really well. So tonight, um, our listeners are going to hear your single, uh, Fallen Apart. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Um, well, the song came together. My husband, usually how it happens is he, he plays a riff and he plays a melody and, and I just come up with words. And it's just um, the song is really just about I think everybody's been there where you you end a relationship, but you're at that moment where you're not 100 percent sure. Definitely. Oh, it, it, and it kind of is that. um one last time sort of deal. And I know that everybody's been there, so I felt people could be late. And that's how it came about. Definitely. So now this was your first time um, back in the studio in a while. So how did that feel getting back in and, and working on music? I always get nervous when we're starting back up again, you know, and I had taken the time off um, when I had my daughter and I'd just been doing the mom thing. And then... I got to a point, I was like, I'm ready. I want to start doing music. I want to start writing again. And so we called up uh, Andrew and we set up a date and we had already had this. It was just me and Richie on the track. That's my husband. And we went in and we, Richie did his parts. I did, it was like a one day thing. And uh, so I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things after taking time off to be a mom. So definitely it's always nerve nerve wracking to me. Of course. So now can we expect more music coming from you soon? Yes, we have another single. Um, It's actually another ballad called um, A Man Like You that we're going to be hopefully getting into the studio and getting that out soon and getting that rolling. Awesome. And uh so I'm excited for that as well. And well, I'm trying to look for a band or duo set up to get back out playing and stuff. Fantastic. So where can we find you on social media to keep up with what you're doing and what you're working on and when you eventually get back out there and do gigs? Uh, well, I'm on everything. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And everything is Gina Sir Music. So that's G-I-N-A-S-E-R-R Music. And you can find all that on on all those platforms and my music is on you know the normal stuff apple spotify and all that so and you find it fantastic well gina i want to thank you so much for taking time out of your hectic schedule to join us um, <laughs> on the balcony um and i definitely look forward to new music from you oh thank you guys and thanks for having me on i was very excited to do it so thank you you're very welcome so everyone take a listen to gina serrano's song falling apart i 
know I said that I wouldn't call. And I know that I told you I wouldn't miss you at all. I said we were through, that I didn't need you. But the drinks have been flowing, telling me that all ain't true. Yeah, I know I said I want to come over here. And I know I told you I wouldn't share no tears. But I was just lying to my you this way and I know that I love you are three words that I shouldn't say but I promise to lay by morning light and I promise to let you go so you can move on with your life yeah I know I Pro Tips, the business of music, with your host, Bo Summer. Hey guys, it's Bo Summer. I'm back here on the balcony with your Pro Tips, the business side of music. And this week I was doing some research and I came across kind of a neat thing that might be um, applicable to some indie musicians looking to maybe put some money in their pocket. Um, YouTube is beta testing this program called Applause. And basically it's allowing viewers... Of, uh, of your videos on YouTube, and there's an applause button, and I'm not really sure how you get it, but apparently it is available, so you might want to do some research on this. I'm sure there are some tutorials out there already on the YouTube channel, but um, essentially it is a way for people to donate directly to the creators, meaning you, the musician, so um, definitely check that out, and what YouTube is going to be doing is they're skimming off the top. So if somebody donates, let's say $2 to your video, um, they're going to take a percentage. I don't know that they've actually publicly stated what their skim is going to be, but I do know that they are stating that there is going to be a limit for the donations, meaning I think um, a creator can get up to $500 a day or $2,000 a week. So pretty neat. Um, definitely something very helpful, I think, that could help you know, get more exposure for well, indie and, artists. And get their video projects off the ground, for sure. 
Yeah, video is huge right now. Mother Malone, some of the videos that are out there, they need to... Th and I think that's another thing. You know, think about what you're putting on. Think about what you're putting up. Yeah. Don't yeah. just throw anything up there just because. Right. Absolutely. And it's a great incentive for sure. All right, Bo, I want to thank you. Thank you, Anne. And thank you, Bo. So now, right now we have Mad Cat's Mad Track of the Week. This next band is from Rome, Italy. Their name is called Mardi Gras. And the song is from Zero to One. You know, it's just one of those songs about, you know, uh, when one door closes, another door opens. It's uh, just a very optimistic approach to a bad situation beginning anew. And I, I really like the lead, uh, the lead singer, Liana Rastep. Um, she has a very smooth vocal. She's pretty good to look at, too. She's really cute. So here we go. From zero to one. Find a way to start again One chapter of your books come to an end Don't know what will come next Don't know how you'll take that step Stay. 
Rankin and Show with the Mad Cat and Bo Summers is still hanging around. Yes, I am. Well, mm-hmm. we're to the end of another great show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thank, thank you. you guys. Yes. Kendall Conrad, go out, get her stuff. Uh, check her out. You're going to want to see her because she's amazing and really a lovely, lovely person. Yes. Yes. Very and cool. uh, check out that applause program from Bo. Yeah, I'll thank definitely you. post some, some things on the. Uh, I'll post some things on the Facebook Balcony Show page. Um, some more information for you guys to check out. All right, so we're gonna say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. We're gonna end things tonight with a song from Austin Hopkins. Right now, good night, everybody from the Balcony Show. We'll catch you next week. Drinking your way into pleasure Right now I'm thinking about Things I shouldn't be thinking about And taking sips and talking shit Doesn't mean that it's over You're looking for something more And girl, so am I Listen.